there are times where I think I would achieve true happiness if only I could figure out how to build a time machine so I could go to all of the disastrous events that I wasn't able to attend. This is one of those times. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, Mandy, you're watching Swell Entertainment. And today we are talking about the Wonka event disaster in Glasgow. <laughs> this was apparently billed as a immersive Willy Wonka experience. I went to a different immersive experience last year. It was a Jurassic Park type event. I went because TikTokers were like, oh my God, I was. Well, I took my kids to this. It was a bunch of blow up dinosaurs and things like that. And I went to one in San Jose in California and it was not as bad as the TikToks had made it out to be, but it was not exactly what it said on the tin. It used like dinosaur images from Jurassic Park, you know, like that's what it did without actually trying to be Jurassic Park. It was Jurassic Quest. This just straight up used AI. But really quick, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Squarespace. Whether you know exactly what you want from a website or you're not quite sure where to start, Squarespace is the perfect platform for you. They have a ton of incredible website templates to get started with, and with Fluid Engine, you can customize any part of them. You can run email campaigns, update or start your online store, start selling custom merch, or even just have a place to display your work or photos with portfolios and galleries. Whatever you might possibly need to get started with a website, Squarespace has it for you. Go to squarespace.com to get started on a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash swell entertainment to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash swell entertainment. And thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Normally I don't like covering events that I wasn't at just like personally, because my whole thing is that I'm the girl that goes to places. You know, I'm the one that's there. I'm in the trenches. I'm eating the bad hot dogs. I'm riding the shaky roller coaster, okay? But I'm gonna make an exception because we're combining two of my favorite things. Um, bad events that overpromised and undersold and bad AI art. So let's talk about it. So Culture Crave is the tweet that I initially saw about this where it says, police were called to an immersive Willy Wonka experience after families showed up to an empty warehouse. The event reportedly charged $40 for entry, advertised with AI art, and said it would be a journey filled with wondrous creations and enchanting surprises at every turn. Kids were all dressed up and crying, waiting for what they thought was going to be a magical experience. Let me make sure everyone understands before we get into these photos, okay? Because someone's gonna be like, oh, I could make that. That's not that bad, X, Y, and Z. This standard would be fine for a school fair, okay? A haunted house that you make in your garage for fun for kids. It's another thing to advertise something as an immersive experience and charge $40 for it. The standard of required attention is just higher. So yes, a lot of things you're going to see oh, individually would be fine. It's when you put everything together that you realize, oh, this was just a cash grab scheme using AI art. Side note, a bunch of people talked about this when it came to um, musical artists using AI art, um, but I, it, I now can't get it out of my head and it really does, it has changed my perception of people using AI art for marketing. It tells me you don't have a budget. Like it tells me you don't have a marketing budget. You're either being super cheap or you just don't have the money to put into marketing. Now, some people are like, okay, but that makes it more accessible and things like that. But at a certain point that does damage your brand when you are relying on AI art that is clearly AI art. In some instances, this one instance in particular, these were openly AI art. This person said they were using AI art. And so I'm just like, I know you're a multimillionaire. What do you mean you're using AI to advertise your music? Like what? Why? What, what's happening here? This is weird. And so at the very least it makes you look cheap. Instances like this, it tells me that you don't have any form of legitimate media for advertising your event. Now at the start of an event, totally get it. You're starting an event, it's a first year event. We see this all the time. However, to rely on AI art so heavily that you are straight up just selling a fantasy, one, you are shooting yourself in the foot because you will never live up to this fantastical Wonka-esque image that you are selling to your ticket holders. That's never going to happen. So your best bet is to just use much less fantastical images to sell your event because you'd rather have them be like, oh, we weren't expecting much, but this is like really nice. And like, oh, this is a really fun thing for the kids and more people come. That's one thing versus, oh my God, they lied to us. My kid is in tears. Oh my God. And apparently the event was canceled halfway through the day due to the complaints. That's what you don't want happening. So now you got a lot of angry parents whose children are crying. 
Police called to Willy Wonka event after refunds demanded. This is from the BBC, Morvin McKinnon. Police were called to an event described as a Willy Wonka experience in Glasgow as angry families demanded refunds. The event was advertised as a journey filled with wondrous creations and enchanting surprises at every turn. But one visitor told BBC Scotland News that it was a little more than an abandoned empty warehouse. It was canceled by organizers House of Illuminati midway through Saturday following complaints from parents. They have said full refunds will be given to everyone who bought tickets reported to have cost up to 35 pounds. Eva Stewart of East Kilbride said she saw children crying with disappointment at the event, which was scheduled to run on Saturday and Sunday. Eva took said it took her five minutes to walk through the whole event. Organizers said it would last between 45 minutes and an hour. There's a lot of, God, the chairs don't even match. Are these all mismatched chairs? So there's a, I think it says Little Monsters on the blow up castle. It says Sweet Shops on a poster in the back corner. Oh gosh, this is just ridiculous. There's no, nothing even on the tables. Like at least have something like, that's an easy thing to do for the tables is just have colorful tables. For example, Jurassic Quest was a traveling show. There was at least two or three shows Loca like groups traveling with different animatronic dinosaurs and various things for the events to different cities. Okay, it was a traveling tour essentially. Have a handful of tables for each tour. You decorate them at the very least with fun colors and candy and things like that, okay? That's that's an easy upgrade because why do you just have bare wooden tables? And some of these just have trash on them. Oh my gosh, this bag of candy with just a random gummy bear, styrofoam gummy bear on the floor. The 19 year old attended the event at Box Hub Warehouse in White Inch with a group of friends after getting hold of discounted tickets. It was basically advertised as this big massive Willy Wonka experience with optical illusions and big chocolate fountains and sweets, she said. But when we got there, it was practically an abandoned empty warehouse with hardly anything to it. A post from organizers House of Illuminati in January described Charlie and the Chocolate Factory themed event as where dreams become reality. Eva said she spoke to people who had traveled from Aberdeen, Dundee, Fief, and even Newcastle to attend. She also spoke to actors who were hired for the event who said they had been learning scripts for months and were told on the day to abandon them and improvise. Scripts being abandoned, okay, that's either... We couldn't get the licensing for something because when you are doing something like this, there's no way this isn't an officially licensed event, right? From Wonka, because that's that's a trademark that someone owns. I think right now it's whoever made the Wonka movie. I didn't watch it, sorry, I didn't want to. Whoever made the movie, like that's who owns the licensing right now. So I'm wondering, scrapping the scripts but keeping the character designs, they can say like, oh yeah, the costumes are just costumes, but like actually saying lines that are implying that you are part of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, that could be a licensing issue that they were just hoping last minute would come through. I don't know, because I don't know why you would abandon the scripts overall, because even in an instance like this, this is something I would never tell Act, if you have actors at your events, actors sure can make or break your event. A bad actor is going to ruin things, but a bad event can be elevated by incredible actors. Okay. Incredible performers. Okay. I know a lot of people I'm born and raised in Southern California. I know a lot of people who are scare actors and not scary farm. I know a lot of people who've worked at Disneyland. Okay. I know a lot of people who have just done stage productions and things like that, or just been hired for talent for various events where they have to play essentially a character. Those people, one will take any job incredibly seriously. Okay. But also a good performer can really like you, you would get like, oh my gosh. Yeah. The event sucked, but this one person who was playing the gumdrop fairy, whatever the hell I'm making up a character now. Like she was so incredible with my son. Like he had the best time. Like that is what saves your ass. Why would you tell them to scrap the script? So I initially filmed the day after the event, but things have continuously come out since the event, including videos from parents and also the actors have pretty much all spoken out that were included. Most of them at the time of me finishing this edit the night before this video goes out have not been paid. They basically all confirmed that they were given a nonsense AI script and some were even hired within the same day of the event. Uh, and that is the young actress who played the unknown. Uh, which is a whole separate clip we will get to. Julia Burns paid 36 for two tickets for her and her eight-year-old daughter, Lydia, but left the venue frustrated. She loves the book and she was really looking forward to getting there, Yulia said. When we arrived, just a few people with kids were near the door. Everyone said that the event is canceled, but there wasn't any notice on the door or on the website. She said there was no communication and tickets were still available to buy for the event. Oh God, we were just staying, talking with people. 
others arriving and arriving and the crowd became angrier. We left the place and got back home. Never had a chance to get inside, said Julia. House of Illuminati spokesperson said on a face on, post on Facebook, today has been a very stressful and frustrating day for many and for that we are truly sorry. Unfortunately, at the last minute we were let down in many areas of our event and tried our best to continue on and to push through and now realize we probably should have canceled first thing this morning instead. They added that they fully apologize and should, would be giving full refunds to each and every person that purchased tickets. We planned a fabulous event and it just did not take shape as planned. And for that, we are truly sorry. Police Scotland confirmed the officers were called to the event and advice was given. One failed in a lot of ways that's trying to push blame. I'm assuming it's the licensing thing. I think it was something like that where they were sent to cease and desist or something. I don't know what would happen there. Listen, I'm not familiar with their legal system, but something like this here, there's a reason it's Jurassic Quest and not Jurassic Park, okay, tour, okay? It's, it's a licensing thing. They use things that, you know, suggest Jurassic Park, but they don't say anything really that outright states Jurassic Park. I'm assuming this was a licensing thing that nuked it. And they were said, listen, if you have X, Y, and Z in place, there will be a lawsuit is my guess because that would make the most sense to me and why it would be like, oh, last minute, because it could be even simply as last minute. That is when the parent company, whoever owns the Wonka license found out about this. It could even be as simple as like one employee got it sent to them via Instagram, was advertising them via Instagram, who knows? So House of Illuminati, which does have, I assume what they've plugged in is like the Illuminati or something into AI art and mid journey. And that's what it was. Merging fantasy with reality and unique immersive events for all. Probably not anymore. Let's check their website. Is their website still up? Their whole site is just AI art. Mystique Galas, avant-garde art, interactive, techno-mythical, secret soirees, enchanted retreats, latest news. Yeah, everything's from December, it's looking like. They deleted everything. Oh, uh, what to expect at the immersive Willy Wonka chocolate factory experience. My dyslexia is gonna have a fucking field day. Hold on. Um, it is dark gray font on Navy background. Get ready to embark on a journey into a world where dreams taste like chocolate. Picture yourself standing before cascading chocolate fountains, each velvety stream inviting you to dip, indulge, and savor the richness of Willy Wonka's world. The event comes alive with the whimsical performances of the iconic Oompa Loompas. These singing companions guide attendees through the immersive wonders of Willy Wonka's world. Giant mushrooms filled with sweets, colossal lollipops, and candy canes that seem to touch the sky. These are just a few of the visual wonders that await Sweet delicacies to chocolate wonders. They were gonna feed people. I haven't seen anyone talking about whether or not they had any actual chocolate there. They didn't. They had jelly beans that they rationed to children. Apparently everyone got two and tiny cups of lemonade. But my assumption would be no based on what we were seeing. So here's one photo of what looks like, that looks like a real photo. I'm gonna say this is a real photo. So this is from their blog post from Ordinary to Extraordinary Transformative Events with House of Illuminati. I don't think it's the same warehouse, but it's them trying to take a warehouse. They may have flipped it, that might be why, and turned it in to like a neon slinky party, which could be real. I can't tell. This image, it actually could very well be fake. It's horrible quality. It could be AI. I can't tell because of these pieces. Let me go back to their Facebook page. How about that? Oh, they're like going back and forth over a bunch of people claiming that they are working with them. So apparently this shows that they have refunded so far 850 of the 982 purchase tickets according to their Facebook. And then someone replied and said, oh, I dislike you for this. I hope something inconvenient but not painful happens to you today. Like pulling a loose thread, causing an almost imperceptible tear on your third favorite shirt. And this is why I don't spend time on Facebook. Ooh, did I finally get the website? Oh, they didn't delete this one. Yay, you guys, we have the website. Oh, fantastic. Indulge in a chocolate fantasy like never before. Capture the en enchantment. Willie's chocolate experience. Book now, let's see what happens. Not found, not shocked. Dive into the whimsical of Willie's chocolate experience, a place where chocolate dreams become reality. Book your adventure now and embark on a journey filled with wondrous creations and enchanting surprises at every turn. It's giving Tanacon. Like the, like this is an extreme version of it, but the amount of promises, I should say more Ace Family. Ace Family was also just like promising stuff and then not doing it for Ace Fest. Imagination Lab, God, these, that, I've seen this AI before. I don't even think they made this AI. Did they steal this AI too? In the Imagination Lab, Prepare to be captivated by a visual spectacle. Encounter mind-expanding projections, optical marvels, and exhibits that transport you into the realm of creativity. Ench-earning entertainment. I think you meant enriching? It's where you don't even try to fix the typos of the AI. Like that's just, yeah, no, captivating entertainment is what you wanted. So it wasn't even enriching entertainment. You wanted captivating entertainment because that's the next topic. Cat-ga-cutting live 
Perform. That M has four bumps. Ensis. Karchi Tons. XR Serdere Lollipops. A Pasadice of Sweet Teats. You didn't even try. Media partner coming soon. So like the event never even had a media partner. So I guess is they wanted the media partner to be the Wonka movie. That was probably the initial plan. And they said no. Oh, so even before this, think even the people selling all these tickets are scammers too. Again, this happened yesterday as I'm posting this, I believe, or at least over the weekend. But House of Illuminati an hour ago, but literally at the time we were recording this, I've been made aware of Richard Bone saying he is a part of this company. He is not. I have no idea who he is or why he is posting that he is. I'm truly sorry for any upset and disappointment caused at the weekend. Refunds have been issued and we will continue to do so. I am not saying staying at my family home. I would kindly ask that you please leave my loved ones and my family and friends blank of this, I'm assuming out of this. Again, no one by the name of Richard Bone is in any way, shape or form represents the House of Illuminati. The form he is using is designed to mislead you. This was an event gone wrong. The House of Illuminati will not be holding any other event in the foreseeable future. Thank you for understanding. Those are basically what everyone's been talking about, but there's so many photos. So here's some more photos. Um, my favorite one is the one of the Oompa Loompa. She is basically with a bunch of test tubes in an Oompa Loompa costume. There's probably a smoke machine behind her. Um, she does look like she wants to die. And then we've got this photo that's just immaculate. It's just like, put a green carpet down, purple carpet, pink, orange, something fun, different. They've got like a pop-up stand that's a wall. They've got the lollipops. They didn't even try and cover up the base of some of the lollipops. It's just a plain wall with like one of the tapestries hung up of the AI art but the tapestry doesn't even cover the whole wall. Oh, this is so good. I still love this. This was this one. I adore this woman. I, the, the woman who's the, the Oompa Loompa obsessed. All in all, someone speculated um, that this, the way that it was described as just a warehouse reminded them of the Van Gogh experience, the immersive Van Gogh experience, okay? Now I did in fact go to the Van Gogh experience that was off of Sunset in LA back in 2022, I believe is when I went. Basically the Van Gogh experience was an, an art show that would basically show Van Gogh's work, mixing the artwork with AI and animation essentially. I don't think AI, more so animation, but probably using AI essentially to basically go through his work set to music and it was like projected on the walls in a way and on the floors. And it was basically immersive in that regard and that you were like actively in the artwork. Okay. I never made a video on it. I wrote an article on medium for it. That was really it. I enjoyed myself. It was, uh, the thing that I didn't like about it was how loud it was. It like really bothered my ears, frankly, with how loud the noise was. I know I'm getting old, but basically that was someone said like, oh yeah, maybe this is what it was where they maybe had some form of projections of some sort, but because of the licensing issue, that's where they couldn't do it. That's what I think would make the easiest leap for like the immersive element is that they were relying on projections and then they were told they couldn't do that for whatever reason. That would be my assumption because that would make the most sense to me. I think there is a place for things like that. I don't think... $40 for a one day event. Mm, I go back and forth. I think that was kind of about, I think $50 is what I paid for, for the dinosaur thing, but I'm an adult woman. She's 16. She was hired illegally, as far as I know, because she was hired to work like the whole 10 hour day. She was originally cast as a Wonka because the idea was that there'd be multiple Wonkas so the organizers could get as many people through as possible. But the script has this character, the unknown in it. So we were kind of like, well, who's playing that? We were told again, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out on the day. The day rolled around. And it seemed like most of the worrying was coming from the fellow actors. <laughs> like we were the ones asking the questions of like, this doesn't make sense. How is this going to work? Just the logistics of things. There's a fight scene supposed to happen at the end between the unknown and Willy Wonka. Kirsty, her picture has gone kind of viral, like the sad looking Oompa Loompa. But I think everybody is kind of handling it well. I hope everyone does get their refunds. And uh, I don't think this company will be doing another one again anytime soon. I do think this will be another DashCon situation where the, the organizers just 
drift into oblivion. And then every once in a while remind us that they organized Dash Con as if there's some fun, quirky internet celebrity and not like alleged scammers, you know? I think this was a cease and desist situation. That's what I think, but that's just me. Anyways, that's really going to be it. Um, did you see anything about this? Were you there? If you were there, reach out, let me know, comment down below or just send me an email. But let me know. Reminder, I have a podcast. Reminder that I stream on Twitch. Reminder that Small Entertainment is now available on Spotify. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for subscribing to my Patreon. I'll text my Patreon in the comments down below. If you like to come on all social media, that'll be up here. That's going to have all the day. Goodbye. The AIR thing, one, tells me you have no budget. But two, it also just tells me that you have no idea how far you're about to fall because you just set yourself up for so much failure. Thank you, Oz, Eva, Ayana, Abby, Angel, Goth, Glenn, Palace, Pink, Jasmine, Lauren, Amy, Aslan, Medic, Rosie, Victor, Andrew, Tenzin, Sam, Mae West, Michael, Ryan, Adira, Nathan, Zwink, Literal, Jeffrey, Randy, QWERTY, Nomad, Thomas, Tasha, Donnie, Winter, Kenny, Robert, Cameron, Elliot.